All right. So this first chapter is really just, like I said, going over uh, some of the foundations of very basic concepts of linguistics and how a little, a little bit how they play into what we're going to be covering for the rest of the book. Um, so I put some learning objectives here, uh, kind of understand the subfield of subfields of linguistics, understand how morphology plays a role in text modeling, understand the limitations of different languages, and then how text can vary. So in the, in the book, he gives a really nice table of uh, the different subfields in linguistics. So you have phonetics, which is the sounds, the phonology, which is the systems, like the systems of sounds that you put together to have a particular language. Oh, hey, Justin. <laughs> you joined right in time. We literally just started. We were waiting for Sham, and then I was like, let's just get started. Um, so, and this is gonna be really short anyways. Um, so, okay, like I was saying. So phonetics is focused on the sounds itself. The phonology is how you put the sounds together in languages. And I like have this, I had this like hard time understanding the difference between the two. So I looked it up and it's, it's, it's like you have really like phonetics is kind of the acoustics, like this, the actual sounds that you make that comes out of your mouth. And phonology kind of studies how those sounds are put together to create meaning or how they can like, the sounds can contrast um, to make different meanings. So that's phonology. Okay, that was more for my understanding. I hope that helps. Uh, and then there's morphology, which is the study of how words are formed, syntax, how um, sentences are formed from words, um, semantics, what the sentence means, and then pragmatics, how the language is used in context, but all contextual. So there's like a hierarchical um, uh, kind of like view of each of these subfields. Um, and he mentions in this chapter that this is going to like understanding this hierarchy or this organizational structure will help us create the natural language features or the predictors for our, um, our models. Um, so like, for example, he gives, if you take a, a piece of text and you broke it into a sequence of characters for a recurrent neural network, so those would be the features for the recurrent neural network. That would be kind of applying the principles of morphology. So how the words are formed. Um, equally, you could also utilize the information on, on parts of speech as a feature, and that would be um, utilizing principles of syntax that come from the subfield of syntax. Does that make sense? All right. So. Um, Another thing that he notes is that um, there is kind of like uh, in linguistics, a kind of viewpoint that, 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 that sees uh, speech as more as the primary um, to written language. That's why you have like phonetics and phonology only focuses on the sounds, not how it's written. And then like written is more technological. Um, so the, sometimes analyzing written text can be very limiting as like you don't get to get like how people are saying it, you know, how like the inflections and things like that. He says less creative and I put it in quotes because this is how I interpreted what he said. So like it's more, it's less creative and more abstract because you don't get like the, um, get to hear how people actually say the, um, what they're trying to say, uh, you no know, inflection points, you know, and those little nuances that may or may not help you. Also, one limitation is that um, some languages are signed and not even spoken or written. So that right there is also another limitation. Um, so 
a glimpse into morphology. So this is going to help us. So understanding morphology can help us inform um, text modeling. Um, and like I said, it's the study of words and their instru internal structure and how they're formed. And this is literally like the morphology of the word morphology. So I found this image and you basically you take the word and you break it down into its components. So you have morph, which is your base, meaning form or structure in the Greek uh, word morph. You have a connector, which is a vowel, um, which indicates a word of Greek origin. You have your base, which is lodge, which means speech, word, account, reason, from the Greek word logos. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. And then you have your suffix y. But this logi, this stem, means the study of in, um, as we know it. So this is this breakdown is basically understanding what's called morphine morphemes and these are individual bits of a word that actually have meaning and in the english language unfortunately we have a pretty low ratio of morphemes for example like un if you take the word unbreakable you have the word un which is um not a negation of something then you have break which is to break like to you know, break something. And then it, able, which implies ability. So these are all three different units in this word that, that actually have some kind of, that carry some kind of meaning. And the English language does not have a very high ratio of these compared to other languages. But understanding these morpho morphological characteristics will be beneficial for, you know, pre-processing. I, I have a typo there. Um, removing stop words and then something called and stemming, which we'll get, I think, later on in like chapter four or something. Um, one thing to consider is that English is not the only language. Um, and I think in the English speaking world, sometimes we tend to forget this. Uh, and then as we like get deeper into um, language modeling, that is something that you have to remember. Although it is possible to develop models that are um, language independent, like they could be used for any language. There's something called the Bender Rule and basically says you can, you can develop your model as you would, you know, specifically geared to your, you know, purposes if it's in the English language. But just acknowledge that the models that you're building are language specific. Because if you neglect to state the language, you may give a false veneer of language independence to the work that you're doing. Um, so that is like, uh, that was like given in quotes. Um, and so I, and then uh, they make a point to say in the book that for the rest of this, book we mostly will be doing our modeling in English. So as long um, as you state, you acknowledge that your model is is trained and, and the data that you're using is on the English language, it's perfectly okay. And then finally, other ways text can vary that you may want to keep in mind is um, things like dialects. Um, in the United States, we have a dialect called um, the African American Vernacular English. And what he's referenced in the book chapter is to a paper that studied how um, models that are trained to detect hate speech perform kind of poorly on um, on this, uh, on African American vernacular English, which is pretty problematic because one, the model is not as accurate as it could be, but it's also further marginalizing some people, the people that are um, um, already marginalized. Um, another thing to remember is that language evolves. So 
this is very common, you know, just think about, you know, I can think about when I was like 10 and the kind of phrases that people were using back then uh, won't necessarily, aren't necessarily as important now, you know, like certain words have become dated and we don't just really use them anymore. Um, and then the uses of slang, which is a really hard problem um, because there are a lot of nuances in slang. And this is part of the, my research interest is um, slang as it relates to drug references and trying to identify that. So I will definitely be, you know, keeping my eye out on how to incorporate slang because it's very challenging when you have, for example, the word cake in a sentence. Like I had some really good cake last night. Is cake referring to a dessert or is cake referring to ecstasy? Like, we don't know. Um, it's very hard. So that kind of, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, so just another thing to keep in mind, like machine learning in general, text modeling is very sensitive to the data used for training. So if you train a data set, um, sorry, if you train a model on Twitter data, for example, and try to apply it for um, like uh, health data, you're not gonna get the same, you know, you're not gonna get the desired outcome. You're probably gonna have a poor fitted model. Um, and that is it. That is chapter one. Any questions? Hi, Sham. Glad you could join us. Hey, hey Leila, so fast. <laughs> the chapter one has gone. Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, Sam's not here, so I'm just going to get started. And yeah, uh, I saw Justin. I know Justin. Justin, I don't know if you know Juwan. Okay, so Justin, nice to meet you. Introductions right there. And uh, I'm me and that's Sham. <laughs> yeah, so I was actually um, uh, called because um, I, I was diagnosed with COVID and the doctor had to reach my apartment now that uh, to see whether I really isolate myself <laughs> and stuff like that. Um, I don't know they are coming. <laughs> yeah, so that's why I joined late and they left. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. You can um, watch the recording of all my, you know, my amazing presentation with all this robust information. Yeah. So. That's it, Sham. I mean, <laughs> what has been discussed? Sorry? So that's it. So all I mean, the chapter one just discusses um, how linguistics yeah. plays a role in yeah. uh, in language modeling, and uh, some you know discuss some like key concepts here and there, and things to take into consideration as we progress in further into the book. Mm. So um, what I'm trying to say is only morphology that is really important in text analysis all other stuff are not that important because i can see why they just pick only the morphology to go over it does it does that mean like syntax semantics pragmatics they are not that important only the how to make how words are formed that makes sense because like uh the pragmatics also how language is used in context sometimes is really important in language, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so morphology is just like one part. So they he didn't get really into, you know, syntax, semantics, and pragmatics. But for example, like what we were doing with the tidy text mining book, um, I think that's more uh, syntax, right? Um, no, sorry, semantics. Like when you do sentiment analysis, right? You want to understand. Yeah what the sentence means to determine what the general sentiment, the feeling of that word, I mean, of that sentence. Um, mm. Like if you've ever, um, you know, when you, I, I haven't got a chance to work with it yet, but you know, when you train like language models, like I don't know if you ever used BERT or like, uh, the, there's like Elmo and like all these other 
uh, like language models out there um, for tuning a language model, you can do something like the name entity recognition or uh, relationship extraction. And these are like, uh, I think for more semantics, like understanding context, um, understand the context around words. Um, so all of these like subfields, I think are very important except for the first two, because we don't, they're more uh, for acoustic, you know, their speech, but everything else, morphologies and text, semantics and pragmatics are all, I think are gonna play a huge role. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think I agree with that, especially with the semantics. Even with you know topic modeling that's covered in tidy text, I think that's mostly semantics. And I'm wondering, you know, if this book covers any any other uh, aspects of the linguistics. That would be cool. Um, I I think so. Like we have embeddings, but yeah. So when we jump into part two with the ML methods. You have regression. Um, monetization, let's see, classifications. Um, and then there's deep learning. So yeah, so now you get into like neural networks. So for sure. Convolutional neural networks. Oh, wow. This is cool. So we'll probably, we're going to get in kind of deep. Okay. Um, I really enjoy the paper or is it blog post, uh, post about Bender's rule. Uh, the way she talks about um, low resource NLP by, but as high resource NLP saying that um, English is not only the language that is being used for NLP and text. And I even told Juan, Juan, it's not only English lexicon we have, we have uh, other languages. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So NLP is not only in uh, English, but uh, yeah, I read the whole, uh, this paper or blog and it's really interesting as well. I like it. Yeah. I think she is now the president of uh, the vendor. She's the president of uh, ACL. Uh, which is the large jet body for conference for NLP, I think. Yeah. I have no idea, but I, I know of a, um, it's, it's ACL, right? Yeah, ACL. I don't know if she's pregnant. Hmm. Is the blog post somewhere in the book uh, linked to the blog? What is it? The link to the blog post, the vendor's rule. Is it somewhere in the book? Mm. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'll, so I'll it find it. Like she's been elected a uh, VP. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So she's going to be the VP of the ACL. That is cool. Is that UW? Hi, Justin. <laughs> okay, so I think we are good. Right. Um, so um, the next presentation next week, it will be done, I think, by John, right? Yep. I haven't read the book, but I'll, I'll have it. I'll be ready. Okay. Right. Um, Got it. It's easy. So, we can stop words. Yeah, it should be. <laughs> Shame, I'm, right. I'm uh, looking forward to you presenting some of your work while we do this book club. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> right. Sure. Yeah, I think that would kind of make things more interesting. I think one of the, like, uh, kind of the more frustrating things about the Tidy Text Mining book was that it's this, the same data set, like the Dane Austin novels. Mm -hmm. And, like, I don't know. There's not everything is not, you know, like the real world data is not always structured like that. So you're not always using books, for example. 
So, no, I think it'd be cool to kind of use alternate, alternate data sources as we go through this book. At least I, I, at least I will try to, because it makes it more relevant. And it, for me, it sticks better up here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I might cover yeah. my, uh, my app, like my code base with my presentation. Ooh, okay. That was cool. All right. So I think we are uh, done, right? Leila? All right. I'm good. Okay. So I think um, if we don't have anything, maybe we can uh, meet next week and Joan will give us uh, the presentation on the next chapter. All right. Thanks, Leila. Bye, everyone. Uh, thank you all. Bye.